Hello and welcome to the video. This is a look at this model here. This is the Emax Buzz Freestyle Racing Bind and Fly model. Now this model is available in a couple of different versions. There's the one I have here which is a 2400 kV motor setup for 4S batteries and there's also a 1700 kV lower kV motor setup that will run 5 and 6S. But apart from that they're pretty much the same model. Now quite a few of you have probably seen a couple of other reviews in other places but as I've been away over the half term break here in the UK, I needed some time to put it through its paces to really have a good idea of how it feels. There's always a rush when a new product comes out for the reviewers to get the videos on their channels really quickly because the first few people who post the videos tend to get the lion's share of views. But the fact that I've been able to have this one in my hands a little bit longer before doing a video hopefully will provide a little bit more of a considered overview. So while I'm unpacking it, let me go through the specs. So this is using a 3K woven carbon fiber frame that's pretty robust. There's an aluminium cage at the front that has a little Cadex camera inside. The motors on here are the new Emacs freestyle version. And again, depending on the version that you get, will give you whichever motor setup is right. There's a new all-in-one stack in the middle of here named the Magnum 2 by Emacs. It's running an omnibus F4 target. It has 32-bit speed controllers and also has a VTX on the top as well. Wheelbase on this thing is about 245 millimeters. The weight of it without a battery is 358 grams, so it's quite a chunky little beast, uh, but it is very robust and really designed for those very big batteries for five and six S. The motors again are FS2306 2400 or FS2306 1700 kV, and the propellers, you actually get two sets, as so you've probably spotted. There's the Avian Flow 5x4.3x3, or the Avian Scimitar 5x2.6x3. One of them is for out-and-out -out speed, and the other is more about endurance, and I do like the way that both of those are in the box. Again, in the center here, it's an F4 Omnibus flight controller. ESCs are a four in one unit at the bottom, capable for three to six S, 45 amp, 32 bit ESCs, uh, set up by DSHOT 600 by default. The receiver inside is a little real FR Sky XM Plus receiver. Mine came with non EU firmware flashed on it, so be careful of that. The camera is a Cadix Micro S1 CCD and the video transmitter that's on here has adjustable power from 0, 25 to 200 milliwatts which is absolutely fine for flying in a field. As well as the model itself and the full set of props with spares for both types there's also a pagoda style antenna, there's a spare arm and you also get a little bag of bits including another battery cable. So let me plug this into Betaflight very quickly and just show you how it's set up out the box. Uh, I really like the fact that it has onboard data flash and I can see there's already something in it. That means that the factory, they have armed this model, which is great. And this is, tends to be something you see on Emacs. The ports look like this. So we have TBS Smart Audio, ESC telemetry set up so we can read the current from the ESC and the serial receiver set up as well. DSHOCK 600, 8K gyro and PID loop frequency. And the CPU load is only about 10 11%. So definitely we have an F4 here handling it fine. Accelerometer is turned on. S bus receiver. Uh, for some reason, servo gimbal is turned on. We don't actually need that, but everything else that's turned on makes an awful lot of sense. Battery and power looks like that. So the ESC sensors coming from the current meter. VBAT is supplying the voltage from the pack. Failsafe is set up for drop by default, which is good. PID tuning looks like it's been tweaked a little bit. This is Beta Flight 4. Uh, we'll look at that in one second, but that's what it looks like with the PID controller settings. So if you lose it on yours, that's what mine looks like. Nice to see that there are some modes set up on here with an arming switch and angle and horizon and things like that as well as the beeper. So props to Emacs for doing that. On-screen display is going to need a little bit of work. Uh, the layout needs moving around. It's fine the way it is, but obviously everyone has their own preference. And the CLI, if I just type in version, there we go. We're running the Omnibus F4 target version 4.00 from January the 11th. So that could be updated, but it's going to fly fine like that. 
So now we know that it's set up really well, let me take it out to the field and just get you some flying footage. Now this is DVR footage recorded from inside my Fat Shark HDL goggles using a rapid fire system. That's what those bars on the top are showing me the signal strength. And it is flying absolutely beautifully, hovering about third uh, throttle. Again, I'm using the endurance props on this particular one and having an absolute blast. The camera's working really nicely. The performance is great and it feels absolutely buttery smooth. Now, this is not a real surprise from an Emacs model because, to be honest, the all the Emacs models that I've looked at on the channel have been very good. I particularly like the Tiny Hawk, the Baby Hawk and the Baby Hawk R Pro. And the Emacs Hawk 5, which was the previous model that I looked at that was similar to this from Emacs, was another beautiful model as well. So it's no surprise at all, really, that this is flying as beautifully as it does and puts a big a grin on your face, as you'd expect. Now, I'm flying this with a 4S 1300 milliamp hour pack, which is what my particular version with the 2400 kV motors are designed for. So, in summary, what do I think? Well, I kind of already give the game away a little bit. I like it, I'm impressed, I usually am with Emacs models. It is nicely specified with the Cadex motor, the VTX and everything, just works. There was one soldering joint on here that looked a little bit goofy. As I took the top off to have a look at it, I did notice that one of the ESC connections wasn't particularly great. Now that's unusual for an Emacs model. Most of the time the soldering is absolutely top drawer, but a quick bit of soldering from me got that back connected. It was only held on by about three strands of wire. Nice detail on the frame. I love the kind of hexagonal red accent on the frame. And I do like the fact that there are tons and tons of spares in the box. I do like the fact you have two sets of props. A set of props is only going to cost you a couple of pounds, a couple of dollars, so it's not a particularly big deal to change the props out to something else, but it gives you the chance to test it and find out which is best for you. I do like the fact that you get an extra arm in the box, and having the separate arm construction on this model does mean that if you are unlucky enough to snap an arm, then you have that spare there, and you've also got access to spares from Emacs and their standard resellers, so you can get hold of another one and keep in the air. Having a separate arm does make it an awful lot easier to swap things out if you do have a really bad crash. The setup in beta flight is lovely and it's nice to see that there was a little bit of detail in the black box. That always makes me feel happy because I can see that somebody's actually probably armed it and potentially even give it a quick test fly before they shipped it out. I like the flexible battery mounting. You can either have it on the top, which is where I put it under the two battery straps, or you could mount it underneath. There are those kind of sticky pads that keep the battery in place, both above and below the cage. I'm sure this is a beast on 5 and 6S, but on 4S with the 2400 kV motors, this was a very capable quadcopter that could get in and out of trouble very quickly, as well as in something like angle mode, provide a really stable platform for a beginner. Just be careful that the camera won't go down completely flat. It's going to always be up about 5 degrees because of the way it's mounted. Only a couple of things to be aware of, and I'm really nitpicking here, I guess. Uh, it does look a little goofy with that very big top deck to accommodate the big 5 and 6S batteries, you do have that big top deck even if you go for the 4S version. The action camera mount on this isn't particularly great, uh, it'd be nice if they included one in the box so if you had a GoPro or something else you could pop it on the top. It looks like mine had got a little bit warm, the weather had been nice here before I picked it up so I'm guessing that that was the reason that some of my sticky pads for the motors and some of the other places had moved. I did also reroute the antennas for the FR Sky XM Plus. By default, they come out the side, and I was a little bit worried about one of them uh, sliding out and potentially getting caught in the props. Now, I'm sure that isn't going to happen, but it was just something that once I'd seen, I was worried about it uh, happening on mine. So I moved the XM Plus and rerouted them into a more traditional position, having them supported by cable ties on the arms rather than on the posts. And the posts are round, so they can potentially swing out and get caught in a prop. 
And again, that FR Sky XM Plus receiver did come with non-EU firmware. So if you're running EU firmware, you'd probably have to just desolder it and flash in and update it and then pop it back in the model. And it is a bit of a shame that they're not using firmware that also shows the RSSI values because that would have been a nice little touch too. But again, I'm really nitpicking. This is a lovely model, but then it should be for the best part of $300. Emacs do make some pretty fantastic models. And this one is a great new addition to the stable. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.